Hey guys, uh, Mr. B here again, bringing you another uh, video on indeterminate form. This one is on using the conjugate in order to solve indeterminate form. So in the last video I did factoring, and this one I'll do conjugate. All right, so again, just to recap, when you're when you're you know you're on your exam, you're in your cl calculus class, you're doing your homework, whatever it might be, and you come across a limit, and you know you're just starting to get. Um, oh, I hate when this happens. Hang on. All right. So you're in your class, you're doing your homework, and you go ahead, you sub your limit, you sub your uh, value in here that your limit's going approaching, so zero, and you get, well, on top here immediately we get zero, and then I sub in the bottom, I get zero plus root three, minus root three, I end up with zero over zero. So zero over zero is one of the indeterminate forms that we see in calculus. And basically, when that happens, there are you know there's a limited number of things that we can do. In the last video, I talked about factoring. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, using the conjugate. Now, the other thing that we could do would be common denominator, and then there are a few other little tricks and things that uh, show up not as common. But I think this is probably one of the most common calculus questions that I've seen, and um, you know my students will see in my calculus class. So what we want to do when we get something like this is notice why, how do we need know that we have to do the conjugate? Well, what we want to do is, is this doesn't really factor, so that's the first thing I will look at. It doesn't factor. But if you look at the bottom, you can easily see that you could multiply this by, guy by the conjugate. The conjugate, of course, just is taking you know uh, this guy right here and changing the middle sign, so putting a plus sign instead. So I would multiply this guy by x plus three plus root 3 and then x plus 3 plus root 3 and all the conjugate does is really I'm just multiplying by 1 but what it does is it rationalizes the denominator in this case it could rationalize the numerator as well but it rationalizes the denominator it gets rid of those roots in the denominator and brings them up to the numerator it changes the form a little bit so again what we're looking for something is we want something to cancel so before we we get too far into this, what I'll caution you on is don't be so um, you know expand happy. You want to wait and let and let's see what happens. So with the conjugate, of course, on the bottom, we want that to cancel it, but we're going to leave the top alone and let's see what happens with the bottom first. So if you remember from you know your pre-calculus classes that when we're doing the conjugate, all we really need to do is think of it as uh, you know, this we normally would think, of, okay, it's the FOIL method. We got it first, outside, inside, last. But really what I tell my students is just FL, FL, first, last. All you need to remember is that we're going to multiply the first terms together, and then we're going to multiply the last two terms together. So uh, you can write it like this, A squared minus B squared. Square the first one, square the last one, s separate them by the subtract sign, and that's it. So you get, let's see. So on top, I'm just going to write my X. I'm not going to expand it. Just like I said, X plus 3 plus root 3 and then on the bottom I'm gonna use my fl, my first and last or my a squared minus b squared so you know I square this uh, square root of uh, x plus 3 squared it's just x plus 3 just like that subtract and then the square root of 3 squared is 3 so that's what I would get what ends up happening of course with the conjugate is that the Outside and the inside terms are just the opposite, so they cancel. So then I get the limit as x goes to 0, and then I'll just simplify this bottom part here. x plus 3 plus root 3 all over, and then I get minus 3 right here and plus 3, so that just becomes x on the bottom. So here right away you can see that I'm going to get something to cancel this cancels with this. So it's kind of a thing of beauty, right? When that, something like that happens, you're doing a question. You know you're on the right track. It makes you feel good. Um, Alright, so we end up with... I don't know why it keeps doing that. Anyway. Alright, so uh, now we end up with limit as x goes to 0. And I end up with x plus 3 plus root 3. So now I'm just going to simply evaluate. So I end up with 
zero plus three. As soon as you evaluate, guys, drop your limit. It's gone. And then plus root three. So I have root three plus root three. And I'm going to do this deliberately because I want to make sure everyone recognizes that if I have two root threes, I'm adding them together, then this is what it looks like. Two root three. So it's the same thing if you had two apples, you add them together. You know, how many apples do you have? You have two apples. Well, if I have two root threes and I add them together, I have two root threes. So that's it. So that's our that's our limit. So again, when you see, when you initially sub and you get zero over zero, then that's when you start thinking indeterminate form. So let's have a look at another question, a slightly harder version of the conjugate. So you have this guy, and you can see if I subbed in three right here, I would have um, you know 30 minus 30 and on the top here if I subbed in the 3 as well I'd have 15 plus 10 is 25 squared 25 is 5 subtract uh, plus negative 5 is 0 so this is another indeterminate form question now this one isn't as obvious as what to do because if you look at the bottom you can sort of factor the bottom here which we will have to do and uh, but we it does you can see there that we could do the conjugate so let's do that so again, I'm just going to switch this sign right here. That's what I'm after. Negative 5. And we aren't rationalizing the denominator in this case. We're actually sort of doing the exact opposite process, rationalizing, rationalizing the numerator, if that makes any sense. But anyway, conjugate is all I need to know. So negative 5 subtract 5x plus 10 all over negative 5 minus... 5x plus 10. All right, so remember what I said. We got to do fl, fl. So limit as x goes to 3. So this time I'm going to leave the bottom alone. I'm just going to you know wait it out kind of thing. Uh, I will want to factor 10 out of this this guy right here just to make my life a little bit easier. Hopefully I'll help us out in the future. So fl, so first, negative 5 times negative 5, 25. Minus, because it's positive times a negative, and I end up with 5x plus 10. So that times that, it's root times root, or 5x plus 10 squared, it, squared, it's just 5x plus 10. And then the bottom, I end up with 30 minus 10x. and then negative 5 minus square root 5x plus 10. Writing's getting a little messy here. Alright, so um, now what I can do is I can um, just simplify the numerator a little bit. So let's see, limit as x approaches 3 so I just got negative 5x and then uh, 25 subtract 10 so 15 plus 15 and then that's all over 30 minus 10x just like that and then negative 5 minus root 5x plus 10 so you're at this step, you might just do a quick look. If I put the 3 back in here, I still have indeterminate form. So the conjugate alone in this case just wasn't enough to get the job done. So what you need to think about is what else could I do? Well, you don't want to think about trying to expand out the bottom because that's just going to be a pain. If you try to do that, it's just gonna it's just going to be a mess. It's not going to get you anywhere. What you want to be thinking, if the conjugate doesn't work, I mean, it was essential. There's no way we could have done this without the conjugate. But if it doesn't work right away, we have to be thinking factor. So if I look at the top, I could take a negative 5 out. If I look at the bottom, I could take a 10 out. So um, let's go ahead and try to do what? Well, instead of taking a negative 5 at the top, I actually just take a 5. Um, so let's go the limit as x approaches 3. I'll take a 5 out of the top, so I end up with. And I'm just going to rearrange the order so it looks the same as the bottom. So I'll take a 5 out, and I end up with 3 minus x, just like that. Minus, oh, I don't need that part yet. Oh, crap. 
5, um, 3 minus x. And then um, take a 10 out of the bottom, so I end up with a 10. And then, of course, I end up with 3 minus x. So that's what you want. You want something to cancel. We got the same thing, so we're good to go. And then we got 5 minus, negative 5 minus uh, 5x plus 10. So let's see. We go cancel those two guys. So on the top, all I'm left with is a 5. So on the bottom, I get a 10. Of course, that uh, 5 over 10 can reduce to 1 over 2. So I'll just leave it as a limit as x approaches 3. And let me just move this down a bit. Uh, so I end up with 1 over 2 negative 5 minus 5x plus 10. So we end up with that guy. So now you can see I'm not going to have indeterminate form. There's no way the top can be 0. So I can just go ahead and sub now. So I go ahead and I put in my 3 in. So I'm going to have 2 negative 5 minus. So I have 5 times 3 plus 10. In bracket. So I end up with 1 over 2. So I have 5 times 3 is 15 plus 10 is 25. Square root that. So I end up with negative 5 subtract 5. So that's going to be on the bottom. That's going to be negative 10 times 2. So negative 20. So I get 1 over 20. So there's my limit. So the limit as this guy approaches 4 is negative 1 over 20. So, um, you know, like I say to my students all the time, guys, if you want to get good at this stuff, you want to pass calculus, you got to do a crap load of questions. So take these two, go find ones that are like it, go find ones that are harder, and try them. If you get stuck, uh, try to find your solutions or message me or whatever. Uh, just do as many problems as you can. Hopefully, uh, these two videos help you, and I'll see you in class. Uh, good luck.